Thanks for tuning in to the Loser Kid Pinball Podcast. It is episode 115. I am Josh Roop. With me, my co-host, as always, <laughs> Scott Larson. <laughs> and Scott, it looks like a new game dropped today. If you want to buy this game, who are you going to contact? Uh, I would contact Zach and Nicole Mini at Flipping Out Pinball. Actually, I did talk to someone today and I said, hey, did you know that this uh, dropped? And he was unaware and he said, I may have to swap out my premium for this. And so I actually did uh, contact Zach. I'm like, hey, you got any more of those things? And he said, yeah, we have a few. So I I sent him uh, the contact. He still has the standard di distributor, but uh, he has the backup with uh, with Zach and Nicole if that if his standard one doesn't work out. So let yeah. flipping out be not only your first choice, but even your safety your, net when they're your not only your first choice. choice. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey, just reach out, you know, play around, play the field. You know? Definitely. Exactly. You're, you're not married to your distributor. Come on. <laughs> I want to introduce our guests that we have on this evening. We're, this man and I have been talking for a few years now. We, we came, became friends over an unlikely, likely situation mates. Cause Scott was ranting too much about a, a former company that no longer exists a deep a deep uh, company but a great guy wonderful youtube content whether it's spicy and, and and knocks your opinion across the room or if it's just you know a great gentle uh reassurance of everything great going on in pinball the man talking with us today is carrie hardy how you doing carrie What's going on, guys? My, the, the mighty have fallen. You've got Keith L1 on speed dial, and you get me on here to talk. So, I, well, <laughs> Keith only interviews with us every other week. Every other, yeah. So, I, you're kind of the B, the B slot. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, when Zombie that, Yeti but... confirmed that there's 18 more tile, titles coming out next year for yeah. from mm -hmm. Keith, we figured we better stagger those out because we usually have them on after a release or something like that. Yeah, so. who knows? Maybe you might have them on after most recent release today or something. <laughs> yeah, what it seemed like Zombie, Zombie was saying, look at the Stern production schedule and 75% of his, his games. Yeah, that's a possibility as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first question that we have, before we get into the, the hubbub of Venom and, and Jurassic Park 30th, Carrie, how did you even start out? Like, what made you decide, hey, I'm going to do YouTube and, and start doing these videos and stuff? Actually, I got started in doing streaming when it comes to, like, playing video games. Uh, I didn't do it live. It was uh, pre-recording. Well, I did I did some live. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I did live stuff. I'd get one or two viewers. But you know how saturated that market is when it comes to, like, people playing video games and people watching it. And I, I started to put a little more effort into it you know even do it thumbnails and pre-recordings and putting out like a series of certain games but i just wasn't happy with what i was doing i, I realized like yeah i like playing video games but i don't have a passion for it like yeah. it's just something i do to kill some time if i have it and i realized that like i just when i was editing i just like i don't want to do this and it, it seemed very forced and I was like, well, you know, maybe I should try doing changing the content up. Maybe I should do things related to what I am passionate about, and that's pinball. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's just it's just seemed natural. It doesn't seem like work all the time, at least. There are certain times where, yeah, it definitely is work. But I, I just kind of segued out of the video game recording and videos and basically created my own little video stuff for pinball content. And I've nice. enjoyed it. Now, I, I see seven games behind you. How many games do you have in your collection? There's this seven, and I've got two in the other room over here. Uh, it's Doctor Who and Swords of Fury. And then I've got another game in the dining room. Okay. And, wh and why did you select the games that you have? What do you have? What is your lineup? We got Last Action Hero. I I, it's one of those games that was one of the first, it, it was the first DMD game that I ever got. And I think now it's just a staple in the house. Not so much that I think that everybody should get it or anything or that it's an amazing sure. game. It's just become a staple. And it's like, if I, it almost seemed like it's part of the family. I don't know. The Getaway, that was one of those games that uh, I played at a show. And then a buddy, buddy was telling me about how much he wanted it. And I ended up getting a pretty good deal for it. And it's kind of stuck around. And now it's a grand champion winner. So it's definitely going to be sticking around. I was going to say it is award winning. I remember you. Yeah, yes, I, I got. I, I was going to get into that. You're actually not only do you collect the games, but you also work on them. Yes, and and make them a lot prettier than they used to be. So correct. We're, we're going to circle back to that. Let's keep going <laughs> yeah. with your lineup. 
World Cup soccer was a surprise hit for me at a TPF show. It was one of those where there's a bunch of people there. I saw World Cup soccer. No one was playing it. And I was like, well, I think I know why. Because it's soccer, you know, but I'll give it a shot. And I played it. That's right, Josh. Soccer sucks. And I was like, man, I really like this game. Is there anybody behind me? No. Sweet. I'm going to play another game. And then I played it a couple of more times. And then I played it as long as no one else is behind me waiting to get on. And then eventually I drug the wife over there. She fell in love with it. I found one somewhere around us, got it, and it, it'll never leave. The kids love it too much. For sure. okay. I've, got, I've got it as well in my collection. <laughs> it was my one of my first games. It is amazing. Yeah, it's one of those games that you don't think that you're going to like it because it's mainly the theme. It's like, right, like yeah. It. Then Tales of the Arabian Nights, that's my wife's game, even though I bought the damn thing. But uh, <laughs> it's there, and if I even mention selling it, she's like, no, shuts that down. It's not going to happen. I'm like, you never play it. it but, it's either you or the game, Carrie. Yeah. You or the game. But Tales of the Arabian Nights is here. Foo Fighters Premium is here. That's obviously, I played that at uh, whenever it was at the, the distro place, whenever it first got released. And I was like, yep, okay, I'll take it. Sold. Yep. yep. Jurassic Park Pro. Played that at Expo whenever it got released. Loved it. Uh, mm-hmm. so, so I was waiting to get a chance to get one of those. And so when I had my Turtles, this one came up for possible trade. And I was like, man, if I can trade my turtles for this, I'm going to do it. And I propositioned him and he was like, he's like, yeah, sure. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. So <laughs> Jurassic Park is here. That shouldn't be leaving. And C- Cactus Canyon remake standard edition and the uh, Doctor Who Swords of Fury. Doctor Who is mainly for the theme. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, we got really into Doctor Who years ago. I don't want to nerd out on you guys for being a Whovian and stuff like that, but like uh, that that game's in there. Eventually, I want to get that one looking pretty. And Swords of Fury was one of those games that we played at the show and just fell in love with it. I was like, something about this game. I, I think it was the music and it just you know the the call, call lay, outs too. Yeah, the the layout was you know unique and stuff. I just really liked it. We played a really pretty one at Texas Pinball Festival, and I was like, I've got to get one. And so I found one, got it. And, uh, yeah, so that's what it is right here. Basically playing them at shows and enjoying them and thinking that I would really like to have them in my collection. So then I add them. Which one's in the dining room? I don't know if, did you say which one was? I didn't say it was in the dining room. That's the whirlwind. Okay. I'm borrowing Mm. that from a friend of mine. I'm doing the, uh, total chaos on that one. I still have to do the review. That's actually work in progress. I hope to have that out pretty soon. Gotcha. Which one's in your bedroom? I don't have one in the bedroom. (laughs) Yes. Guns, Guns <laughs> and Roses for like, the you know, mood. I got room. If I get rid of the nightstand, I could sit one know, right, right here. Okay, seriously, I, I have thought about that. <laughs> I know I how you are, Carrie, with your with your toe tan. My wife's like, I want a pinball machine that's never going to leave. And I'm like, well, which ones do you want? And she's like, was it or Vaz? You know, that's obviously the first one. Like, I don't know if I want to have that much money tied up into one pinball machine that's never leaving. Mm-hmm. And, was Vaz. Mm-hmm. and then the second option was Whirlwind. I'm like, that's better. Let's, you know. And then when we ran to this Riviera, it's an EM. You know, like, oh, EM for like five hundred to a thousand dollars. Let's just do it. You know, <laughs> so it doesn't bother me. It sits there in the corner. And yeah, played. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't think I have room for an EM downstairs. So, does it have that EM smell? Oh yes, I, they all, some, they all do. something about that. I wish that was like a candle. I Which, got it. It's You're weird just... though because that is a home use only game as well. Mm-hmm. Like I had documentation of when they bought it from really? Distributor back in the, yeah, in the early seventies. Wow, Riviera's from like seventy two, seventy three, somewhere around there. He said it was his uncle's, and they just sat in the basement, and they they moved it to his house, and it was just they were stubbing their toes on it. Hmm. So, so I was like, "You're joking me!" Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's in really nice. That's condition. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that smell is, but something about it is in all the EMs that I've ever uh, been inside and around. I'm like, I don't know what it is, but if somebody out there knows why they smell the way they do, then feel free to let me know. Does that make you sneeze as well? It's probably the lead-based paint. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's lead. (laughs) Yeah, asbestos. (laughs) (laughs) What is up with the coating on those wires for EMs, too? They're like braided cloth or something and they they don't it, trim like they do like plastic well wire. yeah you're lucky also if you can even see that there's difference in the wires a lot yeah. of the time they're so dirty you can't even tell that there's any kind of difference in them you're like well i hope i'm going to the right place on this one yeah, yeah. i've seen some clean ones and i've seen some where i'm like mm, nope yeah the one i picked up two weeks ago moulin rouge from 1965 
It's in rough condition. I'm pretty for sure a cat lived in it at one point. Ooh. Yeah, I ha- I've had to get a lot of cat hair out of the bottom of it. It's kind of weird. Okay. <laughs> but it's working. It's up and working now. Ta-da. But, but even with the cat, did it still have the EM smell? It mm. does. Wow. It, so it's stronger than cat urine. That's amazing. It <laughs> is. That is really, actually, I don't think the cat ever used the, the bathroom in it, okay, but it definitely ahead. slept in it. I was like, why? How? There's there's coils and relays everywhere. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I, I don't know. It's, it, it is amazing that cats find ways of getting into any space. Anytime we have two cats and we have a box and you open up the box and you turn around, there's a cat in there. Yeah. <laughs> We're off the rails. Cats yes. and pinball machines. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm throwing a, a wrench in the cogs here. You guys are going to be going back mm. and forth and everything. And I'm just going to throw you off topic. Hopefully not though. I would love to get into restorations, but I don't really have the time or the passion for it. So how did you find the time and the passion for this? I like to see things go from bad to good. And it's just something satisfying about it. Have you ever watched those like, like they're actually titled like satisfying to watch videos where you watch something. It's something simple, but whatever reason you're just mesmerized by it. It's the same way with me watching something that's dirty or non-functional, taking it and making it look beautiful. There's just something really satisfying about that. And that's just something that's been within like my system since I was a kid. I always like to take things apart and put them back together again just to see how they work. And I guess that's kind of pretty much what I do for a living now. So it's like, and when it comes to pinball, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, I've got them. And then I had to learn how to work on them. And then I was like, well, I want this thing to look pretty as well. I want it to be able to be aesthetically pleasing to the eye because a lot of the ones that I got were not that. Whenever you pick them up, a lot of the ones that we do get do not look like that. So it, it's just part of the fun, the passion for it is just, you know, taking something that doesn't look pretty and making it look pretty and knowing that you can stand back and look at it and go, I made this or I did this kind of thing. You know, it's just, you know, gives me, I don't know. It just feels good. I get you. <laughs> so what, what made you decide to go all out on getaway and make it just pristine? And win, <laughs> I didn't win an want award. to. It, it, that's the thing is that I, I think this one, for whatever reason, it just evolved into because uh, I had to, I'd had to go back on because I had uh, this one was the probably the machine that took the longest due to partially COVID, but the other part is that I was struggling so far, so hard to get the playfield that I was working on to do. I wanted it to be unique. And I still have that play field here and I can show it to you later, but I removed every insert on that game, every insert. And I changed it to clear inserts. And I was like, I'm going to be original. I'm going to be unique. Now, whether or not it's going to look good, I have no idea. I was like, it could look horrible and this could just be a complete mistake, you know, and and that's still yet to be seen. But I struggled so long and hard on getting the, uh, the, like the water slide decals to look good on the, it just wasn't sad. I, I'm very picky. So when I'm seeing certain things, I just was not happy with the work I was going. I had to do a lot of sanding and re-clear coating, and it just was not. I essentially gave up. And now that play field basically hangs in my garage as like a trophy of just, you know, failure in a way. Just like, this is what you started, but you Still couldn't pretty. finish it. Still yeah, it, I, I, it, it's there on the wall, and it's like, this is what you started. You didn't finish it, so I eventually just bought a new play field. And I was like, you know what? I, I want... I really wanted the the Grand Champion Best Show Award because, like, every year I would bring a game and I would think it would be good enough to win an award mm-hmm. of some sort. I was like, I was like, ah, I just want, I really want that. Just something about that award. I would really like to do it. I have a feeling that I have the capabilities, and it's like every year I would see other people's work and I would know I have to step up my game. Because it's, I mean, just, you know, making it look pretty is just not enough these days. Right. And every year it's gotten more challenging and more challenging. The competition is getting harder and harder because people are getting into the games that have a lot more skill than I do. And as well as just knowing people that have the ability to assist you in making certain things, fabricating stuff. So for Getaway, it was just one of those where I'm like, this is it. I'm putting my all my, you know, everything in one thing right here. Hopefully, hopefully it's going to turn out to be the way it is going to get me that award kind of thing. So I had my fingers crossed. I was aiming for best nineties. I was like, and I've got to win at least best nineties. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to win best restoration because technically I didn't restore it. It's a new play field. So 
I was like, I was like, okay, I don't see best restoration, but if I can get best nineties, that that's that's my goal. It at least be acknowledged, kind of thing. Sure. And so, and as they're going through all the awards, and and for anybody that's seen the video footage and everything of me receiving that award, like, yes, I did get emotional on it because it it really meant a lot to me because there's a lot of work involved, and the competition was my friends at that too. So when they're, as they're giving out the awards, they pass up my game for best nineties and everything. I'm like, man, I'm sitting here doubting myself. What is it that I missed? Is there something that just wasn't good? You know? And then as they're calling out the games, it gets to the grand champion. And I'm like, this, it might be me or it could be this other guy because we all walk around and check out everybody's games. Sure, sure. And we're always looking at the competition and we kind of got kind of look at it ourselves, even though we're not the official judges, we know the judges are going to see certain things and we're going to go, okay, well, we don't have to worry about this game because this game's got this issue or whatever. So I knew that there was a possibility of one other game that might, might beat me. So I wasn't like confident that I was going to win kind of thing. So when they did the whole reveal of who won, it was, I, my heart just like dropped. I was like, Oh my gosh, it was me. I, I, I mean, it was just, I got over, over emotional and yeah, I might've cried a little bit, but yeah, it was a very, uh, Big moment. It was right up there with the birth of my kids, sadly. But my kids more, obviously. But I just there are very few times I've just, you know, cried over something. And that was one of those moments. Okay, but have any of your kids won best in show? Not yet. Yeah. So <laughs> So they need to step it up. So they need to I'm step here. it up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Look at what the other kids are doing. Come on. Come on. <laughs> well, okay, that's awesome. Do you have a project you're currently working on or do you have one of those titles you're looking for to restore? I need to work on Earthshaker. Uh, that's the next one I want to do. I want to try to go for maybe best eighties. It's like from now it's like, I just kind of want to get every award. It's like, I'm not aiming for best of show now. now I'm just kind of want, I want best eighties. I want best seventies. I want, you know, best nineties. I kind of want to get that. I was hoping to get best nineties on my Johnny demonic. I got runner up. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll play around with the eighties. So I'm going to try to get a earth shaker, hopefully done by TPF. We'll see. I just got to, get started on the damn thing it's out there in the garage right now hmm. those are good games <laughs> <laughs> well cool is there anything else you want to share with us before we move on to some of the news or do you have any other questions scott well speaking of, of texas i i was unaware that the <laughs> that the hotel came online and immediately sold out <laughs> yeah in, in threat less than three minutes it is crazy oh so, yeah uh, so I I don't know I'm I'm looking at alternative housing for that but there's all kinds of hotels all around there that oh, you yeah, can no, get but it just fine. it's just for me it's just like it's just easier to have everything right there in one hotel and stuff yeah. and happy hour is always a plus too no it's always good <laughs> so Scott you kind of talked about this before we started recording but you yeah. wanted to get kind of Carrie's thoughts on Venom now that it's been a yeah, couple of weeks it's, and- it's been cooking for a while. This is the second major release for the year from Stern. Uh, first one being Foo Fighters, which you own. Mm-hmm. Now, I, if you want to, go check out Carrie's videos because Carrie goes through and breaks down what his thoughts are on the gameplay, but also on the interest level. And I'm wondering if the interest level has changed at all since you did that video about three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. It's, and it's one of those things where this is like not something uh, that I, I pride myself on. I, I consider myself to be very humble, honestly. But I, it's like I typically have a pretty good feeling about certain games when they get released and I can see gameplay and I can kind of get a good feeling if this is something that I'm going to like, if the majority of people are going to like it and stuff like that. So, it, and it's just kind of rained true. My thoughts on Jurassic Park. I was one of those games I remember watching the stream. I was like, this game is, is going to be great. This is an yeah. amazing game. Same thing with Godzilla and stuff like that. It's just like certain games really just call out to me. There's just something about it. I can tell that they're going to do well. And I have yet to play Venom. Okay. But by looking at the gameplay stream and everything, it's just, it, it seems like a typical fan layout. I mean, and, and that's one yeah. of those things where I think what's going to stand out about this game is the code. This is mm-hmm. going to be, it's a lot, it's going to be weighing on Dwight's shoulders for this game because it's going to mainly depend on what he's got going for it. Yeah. Because everything else is going to be your standard shoot here, shoot here. Yes, the game changes. I think the premium is obviously the way to go if you want to get this game, unless you just really want to experience the RP ad- aspect in pinball. 
which I'm totally on board for. I think what he's wanting to do and bring into pinball, I'm like bring it on. That's okay. That's cool. I know people have their concerns and kind of iffy feelings about it, but I still feel that layout wise, I mean, okay. It's, I got a, pr you. it's a proven layout. I yeah. Mean, right? yeah it's I not mean, good. Brian, it's not good. Brian Eddy is the king of fans. I yeah. mean, he has Attack from Mars and Medieval Madness, and he has Stranger Things. They're all excellent fan layouts. So mm -hmm. you can design those nicely. Yeah, uh, I just think that it's it's still going to come down to code on this one, and and I won't get to really experience that till I get around to playing it. I know a lot of people that have played it comment like I knew they would. The most top pick, most top used word is fast. And I'm like, yeah, yeah that, like the game, yeah, it's fast. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Anybody watching it or played it was that was their top word to use was it's fast, it's fast. Well, he did that on the that return back to the in lanes. So, you know, those ball hoppers that he has on both sides, mm -hmm. it as it, it cuts off split seconds because those balls release when they're coming down the habit trails. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, it's not your typical game. It, it will automatically play faster just because you're feeding balls lower on the play field. And I think that's going to be a learning aspect for yeah. a lot of players out there is that, you know, a lot of the times it's, it's kind of like baseball, keep your eye on the ball. So whenever right. you hit a ball up with a particular, the 180 scoop shot, the 180 turnaround, you're watching that as it's going to feed to the next wire form. And you're expecting to, that eventually reach your flipper. But while you may be keeping your eye on that ball, one's right. already shot out and you've missed your shot. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's going to be a learning curve for a lot of people and probably including myself. Cause I know like on Halloween and, uh, the, the Scooby games, those elevators that drop the ball back into mm -hmm. the end lane, I, I'd miss that I, I every, every time. time. Every time. So, I'm just yep. like, man, I can not I can never remember, even though there's a particular sound, mm -hmm. a little bit of a light cue on there, but I just, it just, it was, I never could get it down. Yeah. No, I yeah. totally get you. But I think the game is definitely going to be highly dependent on the code. It's the same yeah. way with Stranger Things. At first, when it first launched, you know, well, I wasn't impressed with it. Now it's a highly sought after game. And my right. thoughts eventually did change on the game over a year ago at expo i was like mm -hmm. man when the lights turned down i got more into the game i think mm -hmm. it, the atmosphere of which you play that game is really what makes it stand out right i mean like yeah i still couldn't get the ball into the demogorgon's mouth but at least they updated it to where it, it's basically got hp and you can knock it down and kill it that way so right. that yeah. helped code evolved and made it mm -hmm. better yeah well same with deadpool you know deadpool mm -hmm. Yeah, Deadpool was kind of flat when it was released, but it's one of the it, it's it's one of those games that I know if I have ten minutes, I can go down and still have a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it, it, I may not I may not crush it, but I can still have a good time, and I know I'm not going to be chopping wood at it. It's a fast game, mm -hmm. but the the way they did the code, it 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 is fun. It is. Now, fun. I want a Deadpool for sure, and there's one here at the Family Center. And I played it just recently, and the switch on the scoop is broken. So if you want to play a Deadpool that's like not fun, break yep. the scoop but, switch and well, see how much fun you have. That's it's where like, everything <laughs> happens in the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you, I was you like, hit the scoop every fifth shot. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there waiting for me to do something. Mm. It's got to do a ball search, and then eventually it shoots out again. But I was like, well, I'm killing time while I'm waiting for my wife to finish on the coin pusher machine. So whatever. So yeah. <laughs> Yikes. We had a Lord of the Rings like that here, and it was the uh, the sword lock was broken, and it wasn't registering for the two towers multi-ball. So it was like you couldn't do, I don't know, the easy multi-balls to get into weren't easy because they weren't working. So <laughs> It's annoying when that stuff happens. So, yeah. so Josh just went straight for Valinor. You can't go to Valinor without, you've got to complete two towers, though. So. No, okay, well, all right. <laughs> I wish I could go straight to Valinor, but no. So yeah, but like back to Venom. Uh, before we go off too much of a tangent, like the, the yeah the like I said, the game visually, aesthetically wise, Yeti did great on the art. This is like it's one of those things people said a lot too is that it looks busy on the play field because he did he a packs it. Yeah, he, well, Deadpool is the same way. Mm -hmm. like if you strip out Yeti's artwork, the play field is not that packed. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. But with Yeti's artwork, it actually makes it feel more full. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm not saying you have to have more on the play field because obviously you don't to, to have a great game, but you do have to feel like you are uh, getting your, getting your money's worth. I I've said it before. Venom is, is a big risk for Stern because they're doing a couple of things 
simultaneously. There, one, this game is something that, and I, I don't want this to sound demeaning or insulting. This could have been a P3 game. Because if you look at the the shots, they're all upper upper half, upper third. And yeah, you can you can do the things uh, hanging down off the sides. So it, it feels very similar to that style of game. I, I know there's more to it, and so don't mm-hmm. take it too far. But then you also have the XP where it's more of a video game feel where if you, yeah, if you're a legend, you can stand up and, and speed run the game. But for the most part, you're going to be chipping away, getting more experience, getting better at the battles, and it's so it's saving your progress. That's the challenge, though, is that if you're... I was disappointed that they didn't play that more in Stern's reveal and in their review. They That should have been a focus to say, hey, this is for you guys who are the online uh, role-playing games, the the video games that where you're building up experience. This is your game, and this is why you should consider this game. But they were selling it like a typical game. Yeah. And, and that's really where you're going to fail because if you look at the Venom play, play field and compare that to a Godzilla play field, you're going to wonder where the assets are. Yeah. But the bottom line is it's a different style game. So it's it, it, that that's just the visual inspection. I'm not saying the whole game experience, but you're going to make those comparisons. Yeah. Well, what made me chuckle too is is don't get me wrong, I love a good video mode, but I when they were touting this as like the best video mode, if not the very top 5, I don't like the video mode. I I just it's I I don't know, it's been done before. It, it it's, yeah. it's werewolves on Dracula. It's, you know, it's I don't know. I just <laughs> okay, video it's very modes, bold. they're it's gimmicks very bold to say that. Yeah. Well, they're they're gimmicks, right? Yeah. I mean, it's supposed to just hey, here's like your. Uh, do you remember like the old video games where there was like an Easter egg and you ended up like playing Space Invaders in the middle of a game or something like that? You know, yeah. just, it would take you to a completely side game and you play that and then it jumps you back to the game. That's what uh, that's what video modes seem to me. Mm-hmm. Is that it's like okay, this is a fun distraction. I, I guess you could say a little bit like Black Rose. They have those mini, you know, th- those mini uh, video modes where you're throwing the knife or whatever, you know, jump into the ship or you're swimming yeah. out of the water and trying to yeah. get... see. But I like those ones. I just, I guess, I, I mean, it's not as bad as theater or magic playing pinball inside a pinball. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> but it just, I don't know. I think overall, Venom. It, I don't know what it is about this game. I just, I don't really have the urge to own one. Like Venom's all right. Like I'm not opposed to him. I, I know I just, of a few people who are buying it, but that's good. I, I don't know okay, anyone. A few, but I don't. It, usually, and, and Carrie, you got on this in your video. Usually, there's a lot of people you put feelers out. Hey, the new game's coming out. Who's in? And you usually get like the handful of people, the people who buy buy a lot of them, and the people who it's like their dream theme and you get at least some buzz from like 40 to 50 percent of the people Mm -hmm. with venom the okay i don't know of one person who is super excited about this direction now that again this is a new direction it's unproven people haven't played it yet to really experience it it could be uh, you know, it could be the best thing that happened to pinball in 20 years. Well, I think the other but hard part too I, is I, listening, I don't know. Listening to Dwight, they've really been pushing that it's not a mode based game either. Right. And I, I don't know if that turns people off as well. Like I like my World Cup soccer. It's not a mode based game. It isn't. But well, Elwin's games are all mode based games. Okay. Ish. I mean, think of the, Godzilla. Like the, you're, you're you're just playing in the city, and sure, then you are. Well, I guess. But but what I'm saying is that. There are, okay, I'm taking this path and then I'm taking this path and I'm taking this path. It's, uh, and people, that's obviously been a successful formula because he's responsible for at least 50% of Stern's production right now. I'm like, it's the, I think a big chunk of it is definitely the theme. Like pinball is already niche as it is. Mm -hmm. And so now you're dabbling into a niche theme inside of a niche hobby. And like a buddy of mine, best friend since kindergarten kind of thing 
loves Venom. I showed mm-hmm. him this machine. He's like, this is the only game that you've ever showed me that I want. Like, he, mm-hmm. this game okay. looks awesome. He's like, he's like, I, he's like, I want it. And I told him the price and he was like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like well, not going to happen. Well, you, you and you touched on that. And mm-hmm. uh, I it, it seems to me that I know, I know they're selling him and this is a fan talking. This is not a business person talking. But we have pushed past my comfort level for like, I was an LE buyer all the time. Yeah. And then four years ago, four years ago. Yeah. I, I got, I, okay, we're coming up on it, but I got Jurassic park LE. I got uh, Avengers LE, uh, like the, uh, the Elwin one. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's the last LE I've, well, no, okay. No, I bought rush LE also, <laughs> but I have a feeling that rush is my last LE. Because the price point has got has approached an uncomfortable level where it's hard for me to commit that much on a game that I'm not all in on. And that's the reason why I went all in on Rush, because I follow, you know, like Tom Graff and I have followed uh, Rush our entire lives. Mm-hmm. So. But, but that great brings up a good point. I mean, we can I, I don't know if we're done with Venom or not, but segueing into Jurassic Park 30th. Sure. The original LE came out at nine thousand dollars. That was four years ago, mm-hmm. and now we have JP thirtieth anniversary. And it's at thirteen thousand dollars, which is in line with other LEs. It is, but that's a four thousand. I mean, it's a fifty percent increase in yeah. four years. Yeah, and that's that is that's substantial. And, and so is that you know if if every year you're going to the movies. And you're paying ten bucks a ticket, and then you're paying twelve bucks a ticket, then you're paying fourteen bucks a ticket, then you're paying sixteen bucks. Eventually, you're gonna say, "I'm not sure the bangs, uh, you know, the the juice is worth the squeeze." Yeah. And and eventually, people are gonna say, "Well, maybe I'm not gonna buy this game." And, and that was kind of my point with Bond, with Bond, with the uh, the Gomez Bond is that I looked at that and I said, okay, this looks like a fun game, but is it worth that price point for me? And it wasn't. So I, I passed on that game and I'm in line to get my Foo Fighters, but I, I still pushed it off to, to the next, uh, next shipment cycle because again, I'm still in that mode of, okay, what is my, what is my comfort level in spending for games? Yeah. And it, it, it feels to me that everybody's in a similar vibe where we love pinball. We love the machines, but is it, are, are we getting to that, that point where people are turning away? I think it's definitely going to be highly dependent on how, like your love for the theme Mm-hmm. And it's just got to be something I think that people are going to be like, is this something that I want to put in my house instead of it just being another item on the shelf that you can just throw inside your house? It's just going to require a lot more, you know, people to be like more conscious of their spendings and everything because of the price point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the other thing that's really, at least for me, that's played into it. I don't like moving these machines if I don't have to. Mm-hmm. I, I've already went through that phase. I went through like 50 machines in th- three years. You know what I'm saying? Because I wanted to play them all. And the other thing is, too, is like, I don't want to spend the money on this game. Like two years ago, I could buy a game and if I didn't love it, I could move it pretty quick. And it was even to the point people were willing to make the 180 mile drive to come out to my house yeah. to, buy, to pick it up. And I would have multiple offers in less than three days. Now people are waiting weeks, if not months, to sell a pinball machine. Right. And they're taking a substantial hit on the used market. So it's like, well, do I really want... You know, before it was like, I I don't mind buying this game because if I don't like it, I'll move it. Now mm-hmm. it's like, if I don't like this game, I could be stuck for, with it for a while. Right. Or How much it. of a hit are you willing to take? Because yeah. before now, I, I will say the last the ride that we've had over the last four years is unrealistic. Yeah, I mean, it, it was fueled by uh, a couple things. Excellent games. OK, we're not going to yeah. discount that they had a they they've had an amazing run the last five years of Stern and, and other manufacturers, but we know that Stern drives the bus, right? The last five years have been excellent games. Couple that with people 
not being able to pay for vacations for their kids, not being able to, to go, you know, take, uh, take their significant other on a, on a vacation. They're like, well, what can we do? So they, they bought these things to put in their, in their home. And so it artificially bumped the demand for it. Yeah. And we are going through now the post honeymoon hangover where people say, okay, I already bought the game. I want to go to Maui again. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're probably still in the refraction period of like the giant load that was burst in March. Yeah. I mean, when you had an overload of games that just came out at one time and it was just like oversaturation of the market um, from different manufacturers. Yeah. And so we're, I think we're still in a way kind of recovering from that. Well, okay. Of those five games that came out, I was it would, only five? Okay. <laughs> the five that I can remember. Okay. <laughs> Now I will say that, okay, I'm going to throw Pulp Fiction out there because we're not going to see Pulp Fiction for a while. Like we've seen the videos and that looks like it's very, the, the buzz is still there for that. If you keep but, your fingers crossed, it should be October. There you go. Hopefully we'll see it at Expo. Yeah. <laughs> but the, but all the other th- games, the only one that is, you know, that Josh, you and, and Carrie, you is Foo Fighters. Uh, of all those games that were released, and even Foo Fighters, if you want a Foo Fighters, you can get one right now. There, there's really no wait. The only game that I've heard that it's hard to still get your hands on is Godzilla Premium, new in box. Mm-hmm. Those still are selling like hotcakes. But other than that, pretty much if you want a game, you can and call Deadpool. And distribute. It's basically Godzilla and Deadpool seem to be the yeah, ones. Yeah, but that- Deadpool isn't getting made. It's getting made like once a year. Right. And the supply isn't huge on it. So yeah. that makes sense. I don't know. Well, the other question I have too, and speaking of, you know, now we have a release, Jurassic Park 30th. Yeah. Do you feel like this cuts out the knees of Venom? Because this is another game release. I mean, is this Stern competing with itself on sales at this point? I'll go last on this one. I want to hear your talk, your takes, both of you. I don't think it's going to hurt or help Venom at all, actually. I, that's a you're only going to be getting 500 of these in the first place and i don't even know that the demand's going to be there for this i mean on, i mean for me i mean i guess we can just get our takes on the on the game in general is that i mean i i look at it and i'm just like okay it's, it's jurassic park it's just you know a horse of a different color i mean i mean eventually when i do my video talking about this i'll be sure to meme that and stuff but i mean it's it's the game that we've already played we know how it plays the game is in a way readily available on the secondhand market as well as dealers i'm sure still have them but it's just prettier i mean mm-hmm. if, I, if i if i ask you guys you know when the game was initially released what was probably, I guess, the least attractive part of Jurassic Park to you? Probably the artwork. Yeah, no. pe- people were. I, I, okay, I, I will also be in the camp to say mm-hmm. that I thought the artwork was was fine. It was definitely Same. in the. It gets the job done. It's nice. It is not a wow art package, but I thought it was good enough. Yeah, it was, it, but like the art for a lot of us was sure. the weak point. Like, oh mm-hmm. man, you know, yeah, it sucks that we didn't get movie assets. Okay, but at least we got the theme song. Sure. But the art is probably the weak spot on, on this game in its entirety kind of thing. And yeah. so when I look at this 30th, I'm like, well, it's my favorite art package. I mean, yeah. I think this one this one looks better. I mean, when it comes to the artwork on it and everything. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. I think, okay, so the thing is, is I... I've heard from distributors and different dealers from a hand of them or a mm-hmm. handful of them. And I'm hearing that from some of them, this is moving better than venom. I'm hearing that some of them that, you know, they're moving about the same. I think it's one of those things that when venom was shown, I think whoever had extra money and said, no, they'd already spent the money at that point. I don't know right. if this really cuts out the knees of venom. I think they're like, like Carrie was saying, it's, it's kind of like they're two separate things. We're, it, it's a product that's already been on the market for four years now. So it's it's hard to compete with a game that came out brand new just three weeks ago. But I, I don't know. I can also see, too, that, like I said, I've talked to a handful of distributors, and they said this is just blowing Venom out of the water, and that it's done more sales for them today than Venom did on day one, too. So I don't know. I, I it's It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Because 
like like you're saying, it's such a niche theme. It, it's Venom's such a weird, a weird theme, and Jurassic Park is so beloved right now, right? Like, I don't know many people that play that game are like that. Just is terrible. It's it, it's like the perfect beginner game, a novice game, and I think if you really love this game, this art package really puts it over the top for it. The the the, the red. The, the iconic scene with the raptors attacking the T-Rex. I, I think it's it's a great... It was a great finish to a great game, mm-hmm. especially when the, the art package, package was the... the, the uh, like you said, the, the weakest part, which even in that point, I felt like it was a 7 out of 10, mm-hmm. if not a little bit more. It's not like it was terrible. It's not like we're talking back to the future from day to day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and granted, guys, we we still haven't got all the details for this game yet. This, the, the full details should be released tomorrow. So I don't even know if Johnny Crap is still doing the art for the 30th or not. It still looks a yeah. little bit like the style of it. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, could it, it's, it's, it could be a toss play, up. Play probably, feels the same. The play feels the yeah. same. Play it's feels the, the same. It's the reskin on the back glass and the and then the uh, art package on the cabinet. But mm-hmm. like my main thing, and I want to, this Scott's the guy that we need to listen to on this because I want to get feedback from current limited edition owners mm-hmm. and yes. how this affects your mindset and how does this even affect you at all? Do you feel that another limited edition game? is coming out that's basically another le i mean does it affect you financially or like i mean or how does it make you feel scott so let us know well i'm going to take the first question that josh asked and um i will say this obviously has to affect venom on some level because if you have a game that's coming out in 500 games selling at thirteen thousand dollars that will take money out of the market that will take gas out of the tank. Okay. However, I don't think anybody is dropping their venom order to buy this. So th- I, I know that's, that may be a nuance, but I'm saying this doesn't help venom, but I'm not sure this affects venom as much as we think it will. Yeah. But because if Venom were the only game, then people would buy it. But there are alternatives out there, including Foo Fighters. Okay. At the, this is a dangerous road for Stern to walk down because this is um, what JJP went down. Wizard, Wizard of Oz. Hobbit. Oh. Well, yeah, well <laughs> yes, Wizard of Oz. I have a, I have a Ruby Red Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. I got the Ruby Red edition. Okay. Um, then with The Hobbit, they have the LE, and then they had the Smog Edition, and then they had the Black Arrow Edition, okay? And I know that there were people who that matters to them to say there is a limited quantity of this game. And it's the, it's the same reason why uh, some of those really limited edition, like Spooky, that was their hallmark. We are limiting it to a certain amount of games. And so people, if they wanted America's Most Haunted, they're like, I, I need to get it now because there's only so many of them. Okay. It's, it's a forced scarcity. The, the market this hurts the most for is the premium owners already. Because what's going to happen is if you are interested in and I, one of the guys I know is interested in this. He's like, I think I'm going to upgrade my premium, and so he's willing to sell his premium to buy this. And so, if um, I doubt there will be too many of these new buyers who are buying this game, it's probably existing customers that have a premium who are willing to sell their premium to upgrade to this one. So. There, you're going to see a big flood of the market in at least 200 premiums are going to change hands of this. And it, supply and demand, right? If you have 200 premiums moving over the next four or five months, you're going to take more of a hit on your games. So in, in the past, when it was hot, you could buy a game and you could sell it a month later for the probably more because of scarcity, but you weren't losing a ton of money on it. Now you're getting back to the used car market where 
you're you should expect to take a 500 to 800 dollar hit when you're selling your new game so i mean as a limited edition owner do you feel anything from this well, agreement? i i actually i like the green look so the the green look and the insider connectivity i actually didn't take out the insert i put it in the coin door so I bought the Insider Connected and I put in the coin door so I can still scan, you know, I can scan or play home play or when it like that. So I feel that my edition is basically the same as this one. So personally, it doesn't matter to me. I also like if you're going to make something that is the best version of what you are offering then I, I'm of the opinion you should at least have enough of those for demand to meet it. And Stern hasn't been doing that recently, I would say until Venom, because there was this for scarcity. People would buy an LE and then they'd try to flip it for another thousand dollars, right? But Ven Venom is not doing that. This, okay, so you are making it... I'm not one of those people who really care too much about being one of 500. If that's the ver if, if my version is the best version, I want everybody to be able to get it. But there are exclusives to LEs. Like you can't get their, their art blades, like the LE art blades. You can't put them in unless you're willing to go to like a third party to make a similar one. And so there are people who are like, no, I want to be part of the 500. Yeah. So that that is dangerous because it will affect future le sales from the market that cares about the exclusivity and it's one of those things that we like we don't know yet but for all we know the 30th anniversary edition may have another code tweak to it that only the 30th anniversary might have okay, that that would piss me off yeah <laughs> okay if if you're looking at if you're if you're saying what would make me angry about uh, a game is if they released a cosmetic different version of the game, but they also cut me out. So my LE, my original LE is no longer the best version available or a best version available. So yes, that would be, that would be crossing the line for me. Mm -hmm. Well, and it makes you wonder if this will help. I don't know if it'll hinder the price because Looking on uh, Jurassic, uh, JurassicPark.com, Pinside, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like this game, if this is right, anywhere from 14.5 to 16. I mean, they're selling from 12.5 to to someone. They're mostly around 12.5 to 13. Right. I, I just, I don't think this really hurts the price. If anything, if I was an LE owner and I'd bought it at nine grand four years ago, I'd be quite pleased as punch because like, Scott was saying a 45 to 50% increase over four years. That's a pretty good return on investment. Okay. But what about if they released Iron Maiden number of the beast? It wouldn't bother me either. Okay. But um, the people who have the LE version that is currently worth, you know, the, around that price, it will actually affect their value. And so there will be a subgroup that it does affect. So do you think this will still affect the original JPLE owners? Yes. Like price wise? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, th this shaved at least $1,000 off the value of my game. You think? Yeah, I do. Because at, at one, one point, my game was going for $18,000. That's, yeah. <laughs> right? It's crazy. And it's the same thing as Medieval yeah. Madness, right? So we saw this. Medieval Madness was that grail pin that no one could get. And yep. then they remade it and all the original ones. There are people who still want the original. I'm not one of those guys because I mm -hmm. don't really like working on games. <laughs> and so I, I was grateful to get the, the re-release version of it, but yeah. I bought it for $8,000. I didn't buy it for $18,000. Yeah. And same with Cactus Canyon. Carrie, would you have bought that Cactus Canyon for $18,000? No. Yeah, but <laughs> and, and, and the re-release of Cactus Canyon is better than the original version significantly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Updated yeah. hardware, new boards, yes. they'll have to service it. I have yet to right. pull the play field on this. Yeah. And, and I would say my Medieval Madness is, it's not the Royal Edition, but it's basically the Royal Edition because 
I bought the standard, then I bought the light kit, I bought the the topper, and I bought oh whatever, um, all the stuff. Uh, so the only thing it doesn't have is powder coating. But I, uh, ironically, I like the way mine plays a little better than my friends. That's a royal edition. But absolutely, when you when you do release a new skin of something, it does affect the value. So if that's a big deal to you and you're a collector that is using pins as a mon- as as a money bank, so to speak, I can put money in this and take it out when I sell it. Your value just decreased. Yeah. So how will that affect future Ellie's? I think you're going to see this cool the market just a little bit because people will say, oh, well, if I'm buying an LE, it may not be worth more than what I'm paying for. Yeah. I don't know. I It's going to be interesting. I guess if you bought this as an investment uh, or your, mm-hmm. your old LE, I still think you come out ahead. But overall, I, I, I just don't see it as a lose-lose at this point. No, I, they're, they're going to make a grundle of money. I, anytime you can sell uh, an LE you're making more money per unit. That's the reason why Stern does it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Their, their, their profit margin on an LE is higher. Yeah. So you're getting 500 of those. You know, this isn't an Elvira. Like how many Elvira forties were there? Like 199 or something. Yeah. 199. Yeah. And that there's 500 of these. There's like It'd only make- 50 of the SLEs of that, of the Elvira. Yeah, they, joke, they should have like cut off little fat, like little pieces of the T Rex from the movie and stuck it in the game. <laughs> no, they, they they should put the uh, what the tri the Triceratops, the sick one that was. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's a big pile of poop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been in the game. Yeah. <laughs> but Just the, pay uh, for that line. But that's the main thing is that I think a lot of people that are going to get this are ones that just want the best of the best. They want that status. And if that's something that they look at me personally, I don't care about that. I mean, I got the game essentially back here. It's just a pro, but I mean, it's still get the layout and the experience of Jurassic Park. I mean, it's still a great game. I would love to have a premium, but the pro plays plenty great for me pro plays great yeah. and uh one thing i still need to do i forgot to do that i needed to show my daughter that trailer for jurassic park and uh, get her reaction to it darn it oh well i, I yeah you I'll wait till it's officially it. released and then i'll show her that one they now here's here's a question i do have for you guys is I want to know, first off, for the audience people, same thing. I already told you my take on the LE. I like my LE. It's fine. I'm okay with the value coming down a little bit because I thought it was kind of over overvalued anyway. But I'm wondering if that was a big deal for you and if that will affect your LE investing in the future. Um, so that's one thing. Two, we haven't even talked about this game as in what do you like? it Like, is this a smart move for Stern? Do you like it? And what do you like different or compare and contrast? This is like the high school essay, right? <laughs> compare and contrast this version versus previous version. Cause this isn't a vault version. Like they didn't go in and fix anything. They basically, they, you know, they put a, a car wrap on it and sold it. Yeah. So, so when you say hi- high school, do you want like an introduction with a three page or three paragraph? Yeah, exactly. Explaining with a conclusion. Don't use chat gpt or whatever it is all right double space okay. <laughs> yeah. use margins yeah <laughs> sorry carrie didn't mean to cut you show off. me your thesis yeah <laughs> no I mean, I, I mean that essentially the only thing I, I like about it better is the artwork i mean i, I looked at the art package and i compared mm-hmm. it to the other previous tiers and i was like the premium used to be my favorite art package i was like man i really okay. I, I have a thing for orange i really like orange and so now this new one's coming out i'm like and there's, a, there's more orange on this one and the color is just i like it better mm-hmm. yeah. but i mean that's it's, that's all it's got to offer me is just that this one looks different i'm like well i don't care i mean right, yeah I've, I've got the game right here kind of thing but if you want to go out and get you up game that looks different and has a little plaque on there that tells you this is number of 500 and makes you feel good Okay. Okay. Do you know what's interesting? I just noticed is they also powder coated the hinges on the back box. I didn't notice that. There are a, a lot of them don't have that. Like the, even the LEs, they don't. They're not powder coated. 
I don't know if that's a big deal. Just that's something I didn't catch. I like the iconic scene. Like, honestly, if I could just buy the translate for this, yeah, I'd be super happy with that. This is this is by far my favorite looking art well, package. There the are champion. ways of getting a a printed back glass of whichever version you want. Uh, you typically have to go outside the U.S. for it, but you can find that. And, and that's the thing is that with this, especially since it's just aesthetics that have been changed, right? Everybody can get the powder coating done. Oh, yeah. There's no, there's no restrictions. Anybody, I'm, I guarantee you that people are probably powder coating it this color right now on their machine. Like I mm-hmm. want that color. Yeah. And then as far as the art goes, if you know the right person and you can get easily Photoshop 30th anniversary, I, I mean, I mean, I'm, people can do this aesthetically right. wise and that's all that's being changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Honestly, I'm kind of with you, Carrie. I'd rather have the pro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I okay. I love the premium. It's fun. Uh, or the the premium LE playfield. I'm also a sucker for the art blades. Like they did a good job on the art blades, and I, I shouldn't be superficial enough to say that that was part of my decision on getting the LEs because I like the the art um, art blades inside that were exclusive to the LE. So I, I thought that was nice, but I, I'm glad there are going to be more people who experience this game in the best version available. Yeah, I agree. Here's a, I don't know, this might be a make or break for me and a lot of other people, but I'm seeing a signature on that left portion of the apron. Is that Keith's or is that the new CEO's? That's Keith's. Okay, you know yeah, better you, than me. Yeah, you, <laughs> no, you can see. Keith, Keith looks like a drunk, a drunk W. <laughs> Scott knows because you know when Keith signed his chest, he went and got it tattooed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was my butt cheek. So <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Mm-hmm. You want left cheek or right cheek? How about mm-hmm. right in the middle? Yeah. Oh, right. Wow. <laughs> How would you feel about a signature tramp stamp? So. <laughs> yeah. Why does it say all aboard? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome aboard. <laughs> so, yeah, I okay. So my take is I, I think it's unfortunate that this came uh, shortly after Venom was released because I think the Venom didn't get enough oxygen to really fuel the fire. Now, it could be a slow burn. Once people start playing it, it could circle around. But people are talking about this and asking about this one. And I talked to my to my neighbor, who's a very small uh, local distributor. And when Venom came out, he's like, I haven't had one call. Yeah. And I asked him about this one. He's like, I'm sold out. Like well, I, and I, I already have my small allotment already, st- already spoken for. And I think you're right. It's, it's, it's just like bond, right? We called this when bond came out. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a slow burn and people now that they're getting that new code and they're getting their hands on the new code people are really enjoying the bond and buying it. And mm-hmm. I know that, you know, they've pushed it back and pushed it back. What now it's in 2024, mm-hmm. like late 2024, but there's actually a small demand for bond right now where there wasn't four months ago or three right. months ago. So I wonder if, it, you know, venom is, is a similar situation where it, you know, after expo and the key after though, Christmas, I wonder if there's going to be enough people being able to play it to develop a, you know, when when you're starting a fire, you use kindling, right? To start that ignition source so you can develop the, the good coals. I don't know if there's going to be enough of these on location to really experience it. Well, that's the problem too. I mean, Stern's moving here in a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. and they said they're not going to start building these till after the move. Yeah. So that's even more time off the table where they're shipping Jurassic Park today. Yeah. You can get your hands on an LE by the end of the week. Well, May next week. But still, I mean, that really that really helps helps the case of Jurassic Park versus Venom as well. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things. It's if you get this Jurassic Park 30th, I mean, you already know that you're getting a good game. Because mm-hmm. uh, it's it's already got it's been well established by the people in the hobby and pinball enthusiasts, including myself, that Jurassic Park is a damn good game. And you, if you just want a particular special version of it, all right, then you you've got one now. Yeah. But anybody with some money can make it look just like it. Yeah. <laughs> 
This is my shiny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they got a real close up picture of their special plaque too. I know That's people. Right. I can make another one of those. <laughs> so, oh, do, oh, by the way, did you uh, you remember the insider connected uh, tattoo someone had? And, and so, oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, I copied that out. It works. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man, woo. <laughs> Oh, okay. So you guys both, uh, Carrie, you own a pro. Josh, you owned a pro. Yes. Okay? You saw this game. Was there anything that made you want to buy it? Buy the LE that came out today? Yeah. No. I would like to own it, but I just... Not, not for 13000 Yeah. Right. That's, <laughs> that's where we're at. It's like, uh, I, I have, I'd rather have two pros for the price of an LE. Yeah. So... That's where I'm at. Yeah. That's where I'm at on it too. I'm like, yeah, it's it's pretty. Well, I know yeah. it's a good game, but just that I'm not giving you thirteen thousand for it. However, I I have said this before: is I I need to constantly remind myself that I'm not the entire demographic that buys games. You know, so I I am I would say uh, I'm I'm probably in the solid pro sometimes le collector market, but there are those collectors out there who they will buy every LE out there. And so I'm wondering if though, like I think there will be people who will upgrade from their premium to this. I wonder if anyone's going to upgrade their LE to this LE. Probably. Cause they, like you said, their LE that their old one, they could probably get easily <laughs> trade in value for what this thing is. Yeah. You could probably get equal value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I want to I want to pivot really quickly. I don't know how well you guys can see me, but I got can you a put birthday. your shirt back on. And my shirt is on. Okay, <laughs> I got a birthday present. My birthday was a couple of weeks ago, and them knowing that I enjoy, I'm not going to say who it was because I don't want them to feel bad. Okay, uh, I, I I got a gift of ooh a pinball. It's it's from Hobby Lobby, but. I, know I was I just there and they did not have anything pinball related. They had arcade signs. I was waiting for my new tires to get put on my car. I was like, I'll go to Hobby Lobby. And I didn't see anything pinball related. This, yeah. this thing drives me nuts. Well, let me it, turn it right with you. Yeah, the slippers says, are okay. Well, you've uh, got flippers on your slings. Yeah. Yeah. Look at, look at this. So you plunge the ball and it goes directly into this. So that means it's <laughs> yeah. just going to, Right it gonna go? it, it's obviously designed by okay. someone who does not play pinball. However, <laughs> I'm going to break it to you. This was actually one of J pop's unreleased play fields. For Deep Root. <laughs> I remember the, seeing the, this layout. This was, actually, uh, at this Deep was fire and brimstone. Yeah. Fire I was wondering why it looks so familiar. That's what he was working on at Deep Root. They must I have know, uh, right? sold it. Yeah. And, and you got to, you know, obviously you got to put pinball wizard in. Okay. In, yeah. By the way, I sadly got that a is ball wizard up here. It's yeah, my signs. that is fantastic. Actually, there's so many things I love about this, just because it is wildly the it is by far the worst pinball layout I've ever seen. Yes, I, by it, far. It, it it may it makes Spinal Tap look like Game of the Year. <laughs> does that sign also go to eleven? Yeah. It, it, it does. <laughs> It does actually. It just, <laughs> it's just so weird. Like like the the drop targets. I'm assuming these are stand ups or something. They look like little buttons, and you got to put arrows pointing directly at your mm -hmm. hit here. It just I don't. It just it's funny. I see it, and I'm just like, they're like, do you love it? And I'm like, yes. Okay, yeah. okay, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> you need to you need to embrace the awesomely like. The awesomely non pinballness of it. Like, you gotta so, love too. So there's a flipper up here by Wizard, but it's got like this little stick coming out the bottom of it. So it looks like a corn dog more than it does a flipper. <laughs> 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 I didn't, yeah. That's... I think it was just an effect for like the the bong off the rubber, but I'm not trying to defend that sign whatsoever. But like <laughs> like it's it's like one of those dogs. where it looks like someone took a bunch of clip art, yeah, knows what a pinball machine has in it but yeah. doesn't know anything about physics and put it all together. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
if you're listening to this on the podcast, you're going to have to join us on YouTube for like just yeah, this you, portion just of the conversation. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> and don't get me wrong. I'll, I'll hang it on the wall. I definitely will. But it just <laughs> it, it makes me chuckle because it was just like yeah. first thing I saw was like I'm plunging right into a wall that's going to send it right down the outlet. Yeah, like there's well, if, uh, if you look at the layout, too. There is no way to save it from the outlanes. It actually funnels to the outlanes. Yep. I don't On even know sides. if there's a way yeah. to get it in like straight down the middle. Is there even a pathway to, <laughs> to get it to hit the slings? Not with that big old pop bumper right there. Hey, I actually don't see the only pathway I, I see between is that the right pop- outlane. <laughs> and if you possibly hit it like that one way gates on some games, like on Fathom. And you can actually get it in, then you could probably play something. So, yeah, it's, it's. I think in order to play that game, you have to have skill on the initial plunge. Sure. To get it to where that, that would be definitely a skill shot. So like, I, I'm, I'm yeah. playing the game. I got hit to the flippers. Okay. Other than... I, I have figured out where they got this though. Like, have you ever ordered anything from wish.com? <laughs> 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 where you get a pi- your picture and like yeah that looks awesome and then they send it to you like this is not what I ordered this looks like bailing wire and the hot glue gun yeah <laughs> oh my goodness yeah to, to get that ball into play it's basically the missile shot on Jurassic Park yeah yep. <laughs> yeah exactly you get it one out of ten times you like come on yep you missed again. <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> this is like Steve Ritchie's uh, Star Wars. I mean, this, oh, is, this is a downgrade from that one. Just just a hair. But yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think that pretty much covers it. Unless you guys, I, I feel like we've, there's really not much to talk about with Jurassic Park 30th between it's $13,000 and it's got a new art package. Cosmetic. Co- mm-hmm. if, yeah. if you like the cosmetics and you're an Ellie buyer, Go nuts. I mean, it, it's a great, it's a great option. Yep. I feel like when, when they do the press release tomorrow, it's got a bunch of new features and everything involving the code. I'll be sure to reach out to you, Scott, and get your Yeah, I'm going to let you know. <laughs> Son of a... <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a group just for Scott on Pin side now. Mm-hmm. You know, disgruntled LE owners. Yeah, exactly. It's, no. it's like I'm starting to wonder though, when it comes to Stern, if the word limited actually means anything to them and if the word <laughs> exclusive actually means anything to them. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. Well, that was kind of the joke, right? <laughs> yeah. Exclusive topper for Bond 60. Exclusive doesn't mean exclusive, it means included. Yeah. Like a, let me Google this real quick. Yeah. Exclusive. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty gonna sure. Buy, <laughs> I'm going to buy you a thesaurus. <laughs> yeah. And Merriam Webster's sending this to you. Exclusive means exclusive. So that's yeah. funny because my wife brought home the seasoning. It's called savory umami. And if you don't know what umami means, no, it, it means savory. Okay. So it's savory, 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 savory. double up on seasoning. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel a like we're redundant. at that point in, what, what we're language, that point in pinball. <laughs> what language is that? I don't know. I, umami is. I I've heard Japanese. people putting it on certain things that I watch certain food stuff. And he's like, Same here. and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it seems to be the new hot word in, in food shows because oh. like there's the six the six different types of, of flavor, you know. Yeah, the you first time I heard it, like, oh put some umami. I'm like, what what um, umami? Like I, I don't like, yeah, I don't yeah. I've never seen it in person. I had to Google it too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just pulled up the Wikipedia on it. If I well, I topped in umami and I got something completely different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ordered the wrong. I one. Add maybe into, the right one. You need to add the safe filters. To I uh, should have put it on uh, yeah. <laughs> incognito mode before safe I googled that filter. one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to go look at my history and what is this? Yeah. What <laughs> umami? No, seriously. I, I was just, looking for savory food. I, go- <laughs> I googled umami for the articles. I was making you dinner, honey. Mm-hmm. This is what I was making. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, crazy stuff. Okay. Well, nice. good news, Josh. So actually, Josh is the only one on the program who is not wearing a loser kit hat. See, I'm wearing the OG hat. Carrie's wearing the 2.0 hat. But I've and, been flashed in my mug. Okay, oh. you do. You do have that was another birthday present for my wife. All right. 
she's like you guys should sell these and i was like maybe yeah <laughs> I, I do love this hat and people are always like why, why are you always wearing the hat because like it's comfortable it's it awesome. looks awesome yeah. i mean i mean okay yeah, I, I <laughs> we're gonna i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna hit josh up after we get off but we actually have a 3.0 version coming out oh so we actually snap have- Four different versions of it, so we might have to narrow 3. it. Three point, yeah, three point one, three point two, three point three, three point four. So, I know, right? Mm-hmm. Mind Are you coming to Expo, long. Carrie? Yeah, you- I, I'm all set for Expo. I'll be uh, involved in even a seminar on that. I don't know oh, when nice. or if it, what it's going to be about, but I'm been invited to do that. So, nice, awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll see you there. I know Scott. Scott is not yeah, sadly going to be there. Couldn't get off. Stupid work. I'm glad you ended it with stupid work. Yeah, they'd also it look, took everything I had and I'm just like, got it, well, got it, clean eyes. It, it <laughs> would I look su- Josh laughing, so I was like, yeah. <laughs> it, it would look super sketch if I'm like, yeah, I'm <laughs> calling in sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have COVID. I will be gone for the next five days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, cool. If if you want people to get a hold of you, Carrie, where is it best for them to get a hold of you at? Uh, my content's available on YouTube. You can usually type in pinball in the search or Carrie Hardy in the search, and you should be able to find me that way. I guess I've grown up enough popularity to where I actually show up on one of your top searches for pinball. So I guess that's cool to an extent. But uh yeah, humble email, email. as always. Humble. Yeah, like, I, I, I mean, humble it's one brag. of those things where I was curious one day. I'm like, I'm curious, you know, and just, and you know, everybody's Google themselves at one point, and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. You never know what you're going to get. But uh, yeah, my content's available on YouTube. I talk and do everything pinball, as I state. It's, I, and like I said, anything. It varies from restorations to current, you know, topics that are going on in the industry and the hobby in general and stuff. So by all means, check me out if you haven't already. Definitely. Check out his American pinball skit on J- Galactic Tank Force. Absolutely. <laughs> it was classic. If you want to get a hold of us, we are loserkidpinball at gmail.com. If you're looking for us on the socials, we are at loserkidpinball on Facebook, Instagram, X. Is that what they're calling it? That's the kids Twitter, are calling the it. The Twitters. Yeah. The Twitters slash X. But uh, I heard that he had a t- hard time. He couldn't, you know, it's like X. And uh, never mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill the joke. Anywho. Uh, <laughs> So X and and Twitch, YouTube, where it's at Loser Kid Pinball and everything. We even have TikTok, even though I've not done a single video. I'm gonna have to hit up Jen Ruper because she is the TikTok. So, someone queen. has to figure out how to do it. I'm too old. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, also don't forget slash loser kid You can get our stuff there. We just added. What did we just add? We added something. Oh, glasses. You get new beer glasses it's got loser kid logo on one side and then the goat on the other so if you want i think they come in a pack of four but you'll have to double check but yeah got it seems like we're always adding stuff to our store on there so we also have a link tree so if you want to hit that it'll give you everything that i just explained so there you go anything else you got you got anything else for us scott you know what i'm bummed that i'm not going to expo but i really want to know who's buying this and why you're buying it so reach out let us know definitely All right, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Guys, I appreciate you having me on here. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Gary. Thank Mm -hmm. you.